Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. So we got one system from the user Rat in Discord so a massive thank you to them for sending in their system. With that all said and done let's rock straight into this. So should already be on the workshop, I'll just pull it in now. Let's see, it should be here. Where is it? It's called Jasper Space Race. So let's see what this is all about. So right what do we got oh ooh. Well, i like the background no stars oh that's pretty cool right so notes probably don't unpause i haven't tested it don't take the risk okay it's pretty laggy and that's quite unusual for my pc to be laggy so right next up we have got I like how he's got all the little individual. Okay, that's cool. So, here's his system I threw together over the course of several months. Sub to Neptunian guy, and I hope you enjoy. Well, excellent. A bit of backstory. The civilization of this system resides on a planet called Kendall's planet. Three decades ago, they discovered there were other planets, even though um, they were not more advanced than humans. They uh, had not looked into the sky yet, but since they did, there have been over 30 year drama. Of trying to get a spacecraft into space. A couple of years ago, a group called R4 made their way into space. Five months later, a group called Light Drop made their way into space. Ever since then, there's been a race to see who can conquer more worlds. Light Drop has had more people to get better technology, but R4 had a head start. This is the final result. Uh, okay. You might have to fix Spring Rise if it engulfs all the moons and rings. Just turn the radius to 10.2 Earths and auto orbit both moons. Spring Rise. There's spring rise. Oh my god. Spring rise. So I'm guessing the green and the yellow trails represent different which group got the planet. Uh, that's all fine actually. Look, you can see yeah, that's uh, all the both moons are visible. Cool. Aha, there you go. So trail colour. Yellow is R4. Green is light drop. So they're the two groups. The blue is the home world. And red is unimportant, unexplored, unconquered. Okay. So the original group is the yellows, and then the green are the group that came after them, so pretty cool. So there's the home world there. Okay, so home world, cool. Okay, nice. Jasper Star, okay, so now we've got the individual descriptions here. So, a star a little bit larger than our sun. Has nine planets and five dwarf planets. Sundrop, Kendall's planet, Pyron, Stardew, Muddy, Sunsetter, Somerset, Springrise, Autumn Fall, uh, Tall Mine, Wintergreen, Stardust, Tano, and Dusty. Rocky planets. So, Sundrop, closest planet to. I like how he's done this in the individual menus here because this makes it so much easier to read than having the massive paragraph. So, yeah, take notes, people. This is a good way of doing it. Right, so, first of the planets. Can we go on to realistic? Yeah, we can. Okay, cool. So, closest planet to Jasper Star, but nothing like Mercury or Venus. This was the first planet conquered by R4. Its thick, purpley pink atmosphere provides for a beautiful daytime sky. The sky at sunset is even better, though. Let's have a look. There you go. So, oh. So, whoa, 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 whoa. Where are we? Oh, I guess we'll just manually fly then. That's a bit weird. So... Go under the surface. There you go. There's your sky. Excellent. Cool. Nice. So there you go. Okay. Cool. All right. Next up, we have got Kendall's moon. Where are we? Or Kendall's planet. Sorry. Right. So. Over here. So this is the home world of the species of alien races known as the Kens. Lately, they've been having a space race to see who can conquer the most planets. It has one moon, Kendall's moon. So who owns that? So that is owned by the second group. So it's one of the green ones. So there it is there. Looking cool. Nice. Nothing much to see except it was where the tests of light drop were held. Technically, they conquered it first. Cool. Okay, next up we've got Pyron. A planet of a hot orange streaks its clouds and an atmosphere. R4 conquered it first. It has one moon charm. And then charm. A fabulous moon with a fabulous atmosphere. R4 didn't know it existed, so light job were first to conquer it. Cool. So there they are there. Oh, very bro. Whoa. Very, very. Whoa. What's all this? Atmosphere. It's all atmosphere on there. Pretty wacky. Okay, there you go. Nice. Next up, we have got Stardew over here. 
We've got some red objects around here. A planet with a marvellous atmosphere and light drop conquered it first. It has three moons, two of which are asteroids, so they're unconquered. It also has an asteroid moon, Krypton. Krypton, the origin for the Superman story, 688 light years away. Ah, on planet Earth, which orbits around the sun. It does have a mysterious mineral called kryptonite. On its surface, it releases cyanide-like uh, cyanide gases into the air, making anyone who goes near it weaker until they eventually go under a drug taste and eventually die. Ah, so there it is. Krypton. Really wacky looking world. Okay. Nice. So next up we have got Muddy. A sulfuric planet containing mud. The light drop conquered it. It has one moon, the moon of frozen hell. The moon of frozen hell. A frozen hell of a bluish atmosphere. Light drop also conquered this. So there it is. So I'll see you need a cold world there. Okay. Nice. Gas giants. So, okay. Somerset. A honey-like planet for yellowy cream-coloured atmosphere. It has three moons. So we've got Emery. A brown world conquered by light drop. Eluca. A moon with an acid called velocinuric acid in its legs. The acid is green in colour conquered by light drops. There it is. And then next up we've got uh, Min Yuen. Min Yuen is it? The moon that was missing by light drop, but R4 found it. Cool. There you are. Spring rise. So I've taken the jump out. Spring rise is next over here. Aha. It's a nice looking world. Let's get a cool view of that. There you go. Nice. So spring rise, a greenish methane ridden gas giant with rings, which were formed by sun moons smashing together. The planet and its moons are a control of R4. Next up, we've got a, a purple world of a dark rock. That's the moons. That's it there. Fatal. Purple world of a dark rock. And then we have Golden Fall. Mysterious moon with craters whose asteroids were coated with gold. That's pretty cool. Okay. Next up, we have got Autumn Fall. Which is here. It's a good looking gas giant, I like that. A fiery planet with broad rings and two moons, both under the control of light drop. Maple, an unexcited moon with history. It was under control of R4, so that's it there. One of its primary bases because it's in the middle of the system. Light drop knew that this was an advantage, so they sent some spacecraft containing armed soldiers that slipped under the radar of R4. They forced all the people off the moon by pointing guns at their head, then they took control of the base and started operating from there. So these groups are very divided then, even, you know, they're from the same origin planet, but there must be turmoil on the original, on the home world, if this is going on in the other planets in the system, really. I mean, that would definitely be some uh, big headlines there, if two groups can't agree. Right, so there you go. And next up we've got a blue moon, it was almost the same backstory as Maple, but it was never that important. There you go. Cool. Next up, we have got Winter Green. So we're heading over here. Winter Green. Oh, hang on, no, where's Winter Green? Uh, labels. Ah, there it is. So we're taking the jump out. So Winter Green. It's a good looking planet, that is. Okay. Oh, ooh, I like the rings. He's using the particle effects. That's cool. So Winter Green. A cold planet with two moons that are burning hot because of excessive collisions with its ring particles. Nothing is really conquerable here, but R4 does have a small satellite orbit in it, so it counts as theirs. This is quite a cool concept. So their worlds are just glowing hot because of all the collisions. That's cool. Yeah, that's why he said don't play it. Because if you play it, these will cool down. Nice. That's a bigger moon. That's picking up material. Eventually, these rings would inferior make these bigger. Pick up all the material. Dwarf planets. Okay, so first up, we've got Sunsetter. Right. So where are we? Orbits. Labels. Yeah. Okay, so. Sunsetter. Where's... I think that was in the inner system. Down here because we did. I think we did miss one. Sunset. There it is. A beautiful purple world with a few small settlements. As there is an atmosphere, it's under control of R4. Nice. Tor, Tor mine. Where's that? There it is. Named after its most prized jewel, it was the site of a ruthless battle between Nightdropper and K4. 
They got here at nearly the same time and everyone in the battle ended up getting killed as there's not enough oxygen in the space chutes once the size realised their survival mattered more than a space war. Years later, Light Drop reclaimed it and built a monument to honour the lost soldiers. See, if they're having a battle out here, I tell you what, the home world, there must be absolute war going on there between the two groups. I mean, there'd be, there'd be a lot of trouble. For sure. If they're having battles out here, the home world where everyone's from, oof, definitely be some trouble there. Uh, next up, we've got Stardust. Where's that? A dwarf planet with a rich atmosphere. So we're getting a big jump out now. So dense that Light Drop had to lower their flag in on a drone because their pressure would kill them, even in their spacesuits. So it's going to pitch black. So there's a look at it there. Next up, we've got Tano. The furthest out any R4 spacecrafts flew. So there it is. It's one more object further out, though. So here it is got water on it as well four degrees oh wow exhausted and radiation filled the immediately after sticking the flags in they passed out there there's also a weird slug like form that cells call this remote planet home it has the largest extremer files in the galaxy boy and then lastly the final object dusty the furthest object out it took seven full years of research on the light drop team to design a safe space for to fly this far out and back this planet is dark and covered in sandstorms as the name suggests so very very far away there okay results light drop have 15 worlds k9 has nine worlds the jasper space race has ended light drop one and now it's leading space group of the kendall's planet but either way you know there'll still be a lot of turmoil there if they're having battles on these other planets the home world would be some pretty crazy stuff but i like that that's an interesting concept that's cool very very nice indeed that's a cool concept i enjoyed reading that a bit of a story focused one as well that's cool i know he's obviously i like how he's clar um, clarified and identified all the objects as green or yellow as well. I think that's really, really cool. So, yeah, a very, very big thank you to the user who created this rat in Discord. Very, very nice. I enjoyed that. That was good. So, awesome stuff indeed. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button. Subscribe for more. Helps on the journey to 30,000 subscribers. If you haven't already, really, really means the world, guys. I really, really appreciate all your support. And, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. With that all said and done, make sure you guys all have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.